the key to getting Stonehenge is going to be getting my mind into the headspace of the people who built it. The arduous journey of the Blue Stones is the perfect opportunity for us to do this. The boys' challenge is to recreate this epic prehistoric journey. You're going to see a tribe from Stonehenge arrive at Karn Menon, quarry a five-ton bluestone, and take it on the agonizingly difficult and dangerous journey back home. My job is to find out how the bluestones got to Stonehenge and what magic they brought with them. So I've come to Wales to meet Tim Darvill. Why would they come from Salisbury Plain way up here? What is it about this place, about the stone here in particular, that would have resonated with them? Well, Carmenon was in a way one of those magic mountains, sacred mountains for these Neolithic people. And the stones themselves seem to have been really important to them because of their healing properties. And here in Wales, that really revolves around the idea that there are sacred springs, holy wells, healing springs coming out of the rock. According to local tradition, the blue stone springs of Karn Menon can cure. Early histories of Stonehenge tell us that the blue stones there were believed to have the same powers. To recreate the journey, the boys need a blue stone, but they can't use a real boulder, so they've gone for something a bit lighter, styrofoam. The trouble is, it doesn't look much like an ancient rock. It's quite flat, isn't it? What do you think? I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's squared off at the moment. Colin has taken on the task of trying to weather it down. He's using a blowtorch to create the natural patterns of a blue stone. Just giving the rock a slight weathering. As if it's been pulled out of the ground, you know. Must have been weathered a little bit. With some green boards and a lot of graphic magic, the boys will be showing you this blue stone take the 250 mile route that experts believe the originals took to Stonehenge. Tim and I have arrived at Karn Menon, the exact spot where the blue stones were quarried more than 4,000 years ago. The boys need to recreate this scene, so I've asked Tim to explain the dangers of quarrying a real blue stone. I think when they were up here, they would have been taking risks in getting up onto the rocks because naturally, these are dangerous places. I mean, it's a dangerous place in terms of the weather and the elements. It's a dangerous place in terms of really quite great heights, great big blocks of rock which are kind of being moved around. So yes, of course, there's an element of danger to it. But how did they actually get the stone off the mountain? When you go to these rock faces, to prise them off, you really need wooden levers and ropes, and you can pull them off and uh, a lot of people pulling, tying, well, you can see the one right, right in front of us there. If you could get hold of that, you could pull down just the right sort of size block. The boys can't quarry an entire boulder, so this shot is going to take some more graphic magic. We found a small rock that we were uh, trying to film, <laughs> trying to get to fall over, basically, to make it look like it's uh, a large rock. I'm going to give this bit of fishing wire a tug and see if we can make it look like it's been wrenched out of a quarry. OK, ready, Steve? Pull that rock. Pull it, yank it. This is harder than it looks. We want to get the angle exactly right, so it's time for one of our studio staff to step in. <laughs> OK, three, two, one, pull. Business time. <laughs> Just took you to big school, mate. Oh, I loosened it. That looks like it might be the one. In our bluestone journey, you'll see this one foot piece of slate become a five ton rock. Cheers, guys. 